Okay, hi, welcome to a Love the Night Sky video. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. I've got a brand new green screen behind me, so hopefully I can put a few graphics on there to make the video a bit more interesting. And today I'm going to be talking to you about celestial coordinates and how they can help us with our backyard astronomy. Let's jump in. We have a coordinate system on Earth and it's formed with lines of latitude and lines of longitude. Lines of latitude run parallel to the Earth's equator. So they go round the Earth this way and they form concentric circles north and south. Lines of longitude go perpendicular to the equator and they connect the North Pole to the South Pole and they go round the Earth that way. Now you can tell anybody precisely where you are on the Earth's surface by giving them your longitude coordinate and your latitude coordinate and where they cross is the exact location you are in. And that's what right ascension and declination do out in space. If I give you any detailed coordinate for a right ascension and a declination, there is a, pit, uh, there is a point in space where those two cross and that point is where you will find the objects we're looking for. Let's take a look then at a line of right ascension and declination. Just as lines of longitude join the North Pole with the South Pole here on Earth, lines of right ascension join the North Celestial Pole with the South Celestial Pole. How do we find those, or how do we define those? They are the points directly above the axis of rotation of the Earth. So if Earth is going around here, this is the North Pole, the North Celestial Pole is the part of the sky that's immediately above that. If you were to stand at the North Pole, for example, and look directly overhead at the zenith, you would be looking at the North Celestial Pole. Lines of right ascension join the North Celestial Pole in a sphere to the South Celestial Pole, and they are split in hours around the globe. Beginning at zero hours, we then have one, two, three, four, five, and so on, every 15 degrees till we get to 24 hours, except we don't get 24 hours because there isn't one. We start at zero and we get to 23, 59, 59. And that brings me to another point. Right ascension is measured in hours. An hour is split into 60 minutes, and those 60 minutes are split into 60 seconds. So right ascension is a number of hours from zero and then a number of minutes and then a number of seconds, which gives you a precise point around the celestial sphere. Declination is slightly different. The zero line of declination is an expansion of the equator. So the equator that goes around Earth, if we were to expand it outwards, that would be our zero line of declination. And if we look out into space, imagine that that is a sphere that we're on the inside of. And it doesn't matter how far away the stars are or the galaxies, it's just a smooth space sphere. And that line of the equator expands out, hits the sphere, and that is our zero declination going around the Earth. Declination then is split into, again, minutes and seconds. But this time we go north, and we go south, and instead of having hours as the major divider, we actually have degrees. So working from the celestial equator up to the North Pole, we'd have 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 80, and then 90 degrees north, which would be the North Pole. South from the celestial equator, we have minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, down to minus 90 degrees, which is the South Celestial Pole. Uh, in between the degrees we have 60 minutes and the minutes are further subdivided into 60 seconds. And so now we have a right ascension measurement, we have a declination measurement and where those cross is the coordinate for the object that we are looking for. Now I just described that the zero line for declination sits above, out in space, above the equator of Earth. So what's the zero line for right ascension? Well, for that, we use a moment in time, and it's the moment that the sun passes over the celestial equator as it moves from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere. 
So if imagine we have the celestial equator here and the sun is gradually moving up day by day, hour by hour. So northern hemisphere spring is on the way, southern hemisphere fall is about to begin. And the moment that the sun crosses that um, celestial equator, that marks the first line of right ascension, the zero line of right ascension. And from that point, we draw the line of zero right ascension and then we work in hours from there round. How do we use these coordinates then to help us with our astronomy? Well, first and foremost, every object out in space has a celestial coordinate. I can tell you with precision, like we looked at earlier with the Orion Nebula, exactly where to find it using right ascension and declination. And you can convey that information to somebody else. I've seen an object at right ascension X, declination Y. The last bit to think about is that the objects in space are very steadily moving. So stars are moving with respect to each other, just as we and the solar system are moving around the galaxy. The most significant impact on that baseline comes from Earth's precession. And that's the slight wobble that Earth has over time as it's orbiting the sun. And that wobble affects whereabouts the equator is, which affects where the right ascension zero line is, which in turn affects where we need to look for every object in the celestial sphere. And so every 50 years, we reset the celestial sphere. We reset where zero line of right ascension is. And that is why you see coordinates that have J2000 attached to them. Because the last time this was done was in the year 2000. And the next time we'll do it will be in the year 2050. And even then, the impacts will be really small unless you happen to live quite close to the, either the North or South Poles. When we think about using celestial coordinates, they are used in a fairly straightforward manner in a tracking go-to telescope. The coordinates are already programmed into the database or you can program in them in yourself and the telescope will slew to exactly where you want to look. However, if you have a manual telescope, you have an equatorial mount, then you can set the mount so that the angle of the telescope is adjusted to where you are on the Earth's surface. And then after that, you can use setting circles within the mount to dial in the coordinates of the object you're looking for, at which point it should be in your eyepiece. For most of us though, not such a big deal. What we need to know is how to follow a star chart and where to look using a starting point like Orion, move to this bright star, find the object here. But it's handy to know that celestial coordinates are there whenever we need a high level of precision. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll be checking in periodically and I will help you out whenever I can. That's it for now though. See you in the next video. Clear skies.